All right, guys, it's Friday, and so you know what time it is. It's time for What the Fitness. So this week, we have a video that was sent to me by a very popular fellow influencer and scientist, and I'm not gonna say who it was because I respect their privacy, but the text message just reads this guy. And it is uh, Walter Longo, and he was on Rich Roll's podcast, which, no hate to Rich, uh, I'm actually going to be on his podcast and would love to address some of these claims on his podcast. Longo is a researcher who has published, I would say, some like anti-protein research is the best way to describe it. And this is him talking about healthy diet. A low carbohydrate diet is bad for you in general, unless it's a plant-based low carbohydrate diet. Low carbohydrate diet and high protein are not good for you. It should be the other way around, low mm -hmm. protein, high carbohydrate. It's better for lifespan to be an 80% carbohydrate diet than to be in a low carbohydrate diet. In the longevity diet, we talk about fats, yes, but certain type of fats, you know, the high olive oil, high, high nut diet is better. Prominent experts mm -hmm. will say, go to a, a no fat diet no matter what it is. Sure, it seems to be true, better to not have saturated fats, animal fats. And again, the epidemiology agrees with that. But when we're talking about these monounsaturated fats, olive oil, nuts, probably certain fish like salmon, that seems to be consistently associated with living longer. If a low carbohydrate diet is not so good for you, let's look around. So this is a situation where it's like two truths and a lie. So he said a low carbohydrate diet and a high protein diet is bad for you in general. So about 2014, Longo published a paper in Cell that got a lot of traction. And I think that the headline takeaway was high protein diet as bad for you as smoking when it comes to cancer. So if you actually read the paper, protein did not affect all cause mortality or all cancer incidents. Shouldn't that be the takeaway? Instead, they did subgroup analysis with no actual reasoning, eliminated vast swaths of data, ignored data to the counter, and basically their takeaways was, well, protein's bad for cancer. Again, their overall cohort didn't show that. Their conclusion wasn't supported by their data, uh, in my opinion anyway. And it wasn't supported by other experts like Stu Phillips and my PhD advisor, Don Lehman, who actually wrote a letter to the editor about this journal article, which Cell refused to publish and instead said that they could post it on their message board. That's not supposed to be how science works. So I actually published it on my website, biolane.com. I'll put a, a link to it here in the description, as well as a link to the original paper so you guys can see where they pretty much ripped this paper apart. Not that it was a bad study in general, but that the interpretations of the data were inappropriate, the conclusions drawn were inappropriate, and I don't know why Longo beats this drum of why protein is bad for longevity. And a lot of this gets tied around the idea, well, we have these associations. Well, first off, the association with protein and mortality is not consistent at all. Neither is it consistent, the association with cancer. And he's also tying in, well, you know, protein activates mTOR and mTOR is a target for cancer therapy and therefore it's bad for longevity. Again, this is an example of scientists confusing an acute short-term response with long-term outcomes. I can take any macronutrient and make it sound like it's bad for longevity because dietary fat reduces flow-mediated dilation and FMD is a predictor of heart disease. High carbohydrate diet, which he's promoting. Carbohydrates spike insulin and high insulin is bad for longevity. You can take any macronutrient and find a short-term mechanism that can support whatever claim you wanna make. Uh, what are we supposed to eat? Nothing? Maybe to Longo because he's a big promoter of fasting, I guess, so maybe he just wants us to eat nothing. I don't disagree with what he said about certain types of fats. We do know that saturated fat raises LDL cholesterol, which is an independent risk factor for heart disease, and quite frankly, is probably why any research associating protein with negative health outcomes actually shows up, because higher protein diets tend to be higher in saturated fat. A high protein diet, low in saturated fat, in my opinion, and based on the evidence I've seen, is not gonna be associated with heart disease or cancer or many of these other things. That being said, I do agree, monounsaturated fats and polyunsaturated fats that you find in like olive oil and nuts and whatnot are probably better for you than saturated fat. I think the evidence is pretty clear on that. And then things like fish 
That's also quite good for you. And the idea of eating a lot of plants, I think that's good for you as well. We have a lot of data showing that high fiber diets are good for mortality and longevity. And again, a big reason why any research shows up showing that protein is bad for mortality or cancer or whatever is because high protein diets tend to be low in fiber. Same thing for low carbohydrate diets. But if you're eating enough vegetables on a low carb diet and getting enough fiber, you're going to get these benefits. The reason this high carbohydrate diet or 80% carbohydrate minimal fat diet may be good for you is simply because it's going to be very high in fiber in most cases. So I agree, fish, nuts, olive oil, probably good choices. I also agree that fiber is a great choice, but I strongly disagree that protein or low carbohydrate diets are inherently bad. I think that this is an issue of confounding variables. And while I don't think Longo is like a scam artist or anything like that, I do think he's caught up a little bit in his own bias and he's not looking at the picture clearly and seeing these confounding variables, in my opinion. That's it for this week, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. One of the reasons we made our app the way we did is so we don't pigeonhole you into any one type of diet. You can do a low fat diet. You can do a plant-based diet. You can do a low carb diet. You can do a ketogenic diet. You can do a balanced diet using Carbon Diet Coach. What matters is what you can be most consistent with so that you can be compliant because compliance is the biggest determinant of long-term dietary success. So we don't pigeonhole you into any one way of eating. You can even do intermittent fasting with our app because you can adjust how many meals you have per day. If you guys are interested in Carbon Diet Coach, tens of thousands of people trust their nutrition with it. Click the link in the description, download it and subscribe. I'll catch you next week.